Our next speaker for today, we have Dr. Vinit Kotak from Shahan Anchor Kachi Engineering College. He has over 29 years of academic experience and electronics engineering is his background. He is enabling students to aim high with focused approach to achieve goals. He has many technical research papers to his credit in national and international journals. Welcome Dr. Vinit Kotak. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, I have this. Good afternoon, everybody. In this era of uh, demonetization, digitization, we are hearing a lot about all this. Unfortunately, these things were actually existing since quite some time, but as a common man, as a common citizen of India, all of us were suddenly bombarded with so many talks of digitization and online payment and talks of that. But then uh, we as technologists were really very happy that yes, the era has come where there is a lot of awareness because unfortunately due to the lack of awareness, we were having this technology in our hand, we were using them, but we were not able to understand that yes, it is the thing. So we'll just go through a gist of, you know, we'll just go through the gist of the era of uh, Digital, uh, digital disruption which is happening and uh, how it is affecting the project manager specifically. Okay. Uh, there is an exponential change which is coming and uh, I don't know how many of us are ready for that. And to just to understand that, let, let's have a small glimpse of a video which will give the uh, you know, opening for this particular session. Can you please? Uh, Once upon a time, business as usual was often good enough. No more. Where we are going, good enough is dead. In a world where everything is connected, where everything is equally excellent, where performance is reaching perfection, there's only one space left to innovate in. You. Right now, you are a central point in the raging tornado of change fueled by digitization, mobilization, augmentation, disintermediation, automation. Well, the list goes on. Science fiction is becoming science fact. Think about self-driving cars or computers that can learn and think. The way we work will never be the same. The skills we need will be dramatically different. Winning or losing are now happening faster than ever before. So what's your response? How will you discover new opportunities in one of the most transformational times in human history? Are you driving change or are you being driven by it? Disruption has become the new normal. With change, it's always gradually, then suddenly, well, things really have stopped happening gradually. This change is exponential. Everything that used to be dumb and disconnected is now wired and intelligent. Cars, cities, ports, farms, even our bodies will be wired with sensors and will talk to each other. These game changers are also combinatorial. They amplify each other, creating a perfect storm of change. Quantum computing fuels big data. The Internet of Things fuels artificial intelligence and deep learning, which fuels robotics. However, Anything that cannot be digitized or automated will become extremely valuable. Human-only traits such as creativity, imagination, intuition, emotion and ethics will be even more important in the future because machines are very good at simulating but not at being. Yes, robots and software will do some of our work, but this will allow us to focus on things that cannot be automated. To imagine change squared, you've got to start engaging more with what might be, not just with what is. Immerse yourself in the immediate future, five to seven years out from today. We need to go beyond technology and data to reach human insights and wisdom. Technology represents the how of change, but humans represent the why. The future is about holistic business models. 
The opportunity is to be liquid, to learn just in time, not just in case, not single improvements, but complete transformations, not individual systems, but new ecosystems. Humanity is where true and lasting value is created. We will engage late and buy things because of the experiences they provide, because of their transformative power. The future doesn't just happen, the future gets happened. The new way to work is to embrace technology, but not to become it. The future is in technology, yet the bigger future lies in transcending it. Let's live and lead from here. Now, since we are in the world of digital disruption, this word digital doesn't mean that, you know, you're talking about information technology or maybe digital marketing, but it basically means the, the pace with which technology is actually moving around and the changes in the advancement. And we are supposed to keep pace with that. Project management is not immune to it or even project managers are not immune to it. But then it is very clear if they adopt it, they are in the relevant world. But if they don't, it, they, they are risking of not adapting it, then they become irrelevant. So very simple logic. And uh, this is what we remember the famous scientists here that we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking which we used when we created them. So that is what the beginning is of change. The thought process has to change. We think about some problem with some parameters in mind, but then when we start solving it, there are so many options now available that the, the, what we began with, totally we may uh, end up with a tangent of that. But then what do we do? It's very simple. We follow the norms of a digital project manager who use the technology to drive their projects to a very higher level of success. But then how do they do that? It involves just to adapt two domains or the, uh, you know, to capa develop capabilities across the two domains. One is the project management capability and of course the other is the digital capabilities. The combination of two today brings this project managers to become so-called digital managers. And these are the project managers who are actually committed to driving their projects to greater levels of su success. A very common and a very uh, typical uh, map of uh, the types of uh, managers which we have actually, the project managers. But then what we concentrate here is this, these are the conservative managers who are actually certified, the so-called PMP certifications which they undergo. They have a lot of project capabilities, project management capabilities. But at the same time, if they actually try to adopt some sort of digitization into their projects, they, they try to understand the concepts of digitization, they become wonderful digital uh, project managers and that is what we are actually looking forward towards in this era of the digital disruption. We need to develop our digital capabilities by adopting this few steps, like for example, create a great end user experience, exploit the power of the core process uh, pro project management, reinvent the PM models, need to be agile, embrace culture change, and actually there are so many others, but you know, mainly these are the ones who will actually be the beginning of the change in the organization. When we talk about creating a great user experience, we all are today aware and we are very much happy to call Steve Jobs because he was the one who actually brought in the concept of user friendliness. He was the person who actually started the concept of Microsoft in Microsoft and uh, uh, basically uh, what he told was even uh, uh, the, the apps which are the applications which uh, were being designed by his engineers that please keep in mind the users. We all know that you know you have to go go go, go to uh, you have got to start with the customer experience and work back towards the technology. What the customer experience is while using that? A simple example I'll give you is the Ola app, the app which is being very commonly being used by many of us. We know that the previous generations were not even habituated to handling a smartphone, but then when they started using this. Let me tell you with big pride that even my grandmother, who's you know, almost like 80 plus, she's very comfortable 
she uses that app books a big uh, books a cab very comfortably and she feels pride proud of that because she is not no more dependent on people like me are vinit just please jara mujhe drop kar do yahan pe wahan pe gone are those days because taxis were not available that time but now yes at a click of a button app is there so keeping that in mind what an experience what the uh, customer will experience then you start your designing and that's what we you know uh, expect the pro digital project managers to look into that the conventional project management in the pre digital time was uh, of course a world of operational paradox the digitization transformation breaks this actually this myth we came across the era where a lot of things got standardized we in ieee actually uh, create a lot of standards and because of the standards which are there the companies are not able to you know define or design their processes in a very simple way they can design the machines in such a manner that today we got n number of manufacturers in the industry standards are same and the advantage is customer has got a varied uh, a variety of uh, options available okay i i don't like this machine i go for this machine i don't like the looks of this machine i go for this machine standards are the same and because of this the customer has now become empowered because of the automation which is incorporated within that standardization and that is what we say that you know the standardization and the empowerment they can coexist the same digital tools that are deployed to bring in tighter control and also help spur innovations of identifying areas of improvement what do we mean by that for example we have a lot of digital uh, you know uh, real time tools now the tools are so uh, helpful to the project managers that they can actually on a real, real time basis create the reports generate them monitor the whole progress of the complete project and parallelly even the resources are being updated so what happens is it's on a one on one basis and immediately the uh, lacunas in that particular projects can be uh, brought out by studying them on the go you can actually you know the, see the areas where you can identify the areas where you can improvise and uh, immediately make the corrections so many of this uh, real time work uh, management software are available which becomes a very powerful tool to this digital project managers we have to reinvent the project management model also for example constantly challenge your project management model like for uh, but how new technologies new tools new frameworks substitutions try to understand them the most important thing is how you might transform your industries before others do it it is a rat race it's actually a race everybody is trying to jump onto the digital bandwagon but then to what extent i will be the first one to enter into this industry to implement it and get the cake out of it and that's what is very important but then when we will be able to do that only when we are able to understand the simple logic of the digital tools which will be helpful understand how to use them not to forget that we need to have an it manager along with parallel with your project manager because there is something which we'll see later on that uh, something which is being avoided our great man the ceo of accenture said that digital is the main reason just over half of the companies on the fortune 500 have disappeared since the year 2000 this was of course the millennium year when we entered and this was the era of transition actually which begins with the digital uh, digitization now we also need to be agile it is clear that companies need to adapt and become more agile to deal with those evolving challenges and the main challenge which we find is or the companies find is okay you need to keep pace because of the speed of technology is faster but on the other end you also need to you know take care of the regulations the compliance and the governance including uh, most of the project approaches on one side technology is moving fast you need to keep pace with them on the other side i i am moving with the technology but the government norms are not changing the rules are not changing the governance i have to change this is a very slow process and that is the major challenge where the agility comes into the picture that okay fine i need to move for further i need to take my team further i need to bring that change into them get them habituated that okay fine 
norms will are bound to change but in if we miss this bandwagon we are going to be behind the race race data i came to the conclusion long ago that limits to innovation have less to do with technology or creativity than organizational agility inspired individuals can also do so much so it can be tough for organization as i mentioned you know it, it uh, to change their mindsets to think disruptively on one side to throw aside the legacy systems and build something new from the scratch this is very challenging specifically in an environment where we are in this era of the change or the structural change even in the government on one side the government is implementing lot of norms on the other side the government is themselves insisting on digitization but then there is no sync between the two classical example the simple gst norms which was put up and you know we all know how much of uh, uh, talk has been going on and how much of confusion this three letter word has created in the minds but yes you know and i know that this is the future maybe three months down the line once we stabilize once we understand once the things are settled definitely it will be the betterment for the country but on the other side how do the small timers or the small medium scale uh, entrepreneurs will adapt to that that is a challenge for them because a change in the government norm on the other side the 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 machines have already come into the picture they have to already change their softwares then the softwares are changed again to two to two weeks before they say okay the norm has changed now so they are dependent on the digital project managers project managers say okay fine sometimes as i told you and i am repeating this sometimes they overgo the project managers will go overboard and they will try to implement technology without the help of the so called it managers okay can you change the this is another very important uh, statement which many of us you know try to miss out on that i think uh, can you yeah. okay uh, next is the culture change it's but obvious along with the agility what you need which what comes in the package is the culture change now if you want to learn about a culture there are a lot of stories which we come across but then if you want to change culture we sometimes we'll have to change the stories of the whole company itself mm -hmm. and that's what mm -hmm. we need to understand how this culture change is going to affect i think uh, this okay now these days you know many a times the projects fail maybe not due to technology but due to the non willingness of adapting to that culture change that is where the project managers have to take the organize into confidence have to implement this particular processes take the people into confidence that no you need to you know come across take them into confidence and move <coughs> together so that this particular disruption helps them change the organization many a times we find that culture eats the strategy for breakfast you make lot of strategies you make lot of uh, policies but they will not be helpful unless and until you change the internal culture of the whole organization we come across many a times that disruptive technology definitely helps the growth of the organization but on the other side it also brings in lot of challenges it's but obvious it brings in new threats to the business but then that is where the digital project managers come into the picture that not they should you know they they go overboard as i told you many a times and they don't even have the involvement of their it department what suggestion we have is to this project manager the so called digital project manager said please do not try to be cyber security experts we understand okay fine your company may not be able to incorporate the it department immediately but 
slow and steadily see to it that you have one. But at the same time, this has also been observed in managers, specifically the project managers, that you know they try to delegate the work and then they leave it to those particular team members. Don't do that. The project managers should definitely know or at least be aware of all the technologies which are existing or which are being implemented in the organization. Otherwise, there is a very big chance of that manager going, is being taken for a ride. The team, he delegates the work to the team. Sometimes the team doesn't work. They will give them some sort of, uh, you know, uh, jargons, technical jargons. Sir, this is not going, this is that. And because if he is not aware of the IT or the technology, the manager will be taken for a jolly good ride. So again, you know, it's uh, what you can say, uh, balancing between the two, how much the manager should try to probe into it, but at the same time, he should not become a cyber secretary, otherwise his main role will be kept aside. Okay, so, of course, uh, the, there's a big impact of digital disruption. The, these are a few of the examples which I've taken, like there is something called as a self-driving car, which are already on the road, uh, already being tested. But then, as an Indian, how much can we imagine a self-driving car being actually, you're sitting in a self-driving car, will your mind be peaceful or you'll be, all, you'll be more you know, active, your mind will be more active looking forward whether that self-driven car is actually taking me to the destination or not. That's the impact of digital disruption, you know. Health and fitness monitors, we'll, we'll see you on slide where, you know, Again, there's a big, big uh, hue uh, and cry about this particular thing. So many of us are now becoming health, health fit. I mean, you know, we are becoming health freaks, I would say. Sorry to use that word. But why is it so? Because there are so many devices where, which are easily available. There are so many, uh, the, the so-called Fitbits and uh, similar products which are available. Okay. Are we actually needing them so many years we have we have, we have we have you know lived without them but then time has come when you have something at your uh, beck and call why not use it why wait till the time when okay fine i am finding something my my pressure is going down i then i rush to the doctor don't worry i have it something use it and save this artificial intelligence of course it's uh, talk of the town and 3D printing is something which uh, I think people are just fat, uh, fa uh, you know, fantasized by that. Analyst firms like uh, Gartner predicted that in the near future, this will become actually a norm that all the employees will be asked to wear a health and fitness tracking devices. Mind you, I've used the word health and tra fitness tracking devices. That is the catch in between. The employee will be said, okay, fine, we are concerned about you, we are really concerned about your family, so we need you to wear that health device, you know, which will keep you, which we can monitor, you can monitor. But at the same time, on the other side, the managers will be thinking, okay, his stress level is going high up, so I should reduce his workload. Oh, today, three days, five days after the Christmas vacation, he is a bit relaxed, stress level has gone down, pump him with some more work. On the other side, you are going on a vacation. You say, sir, I'm not keeping well for three days. <laughs> and in the back end, your boss is actually tracking, oh, okay, fine. So from Mumbai to Goa, Goa to <laughs> Delhi, and Delhi back to Mumbai. That is, you know, I mean, every coin has got two sides. I have purposely put this picture here, okay? I hope you, everybody knows this personality. President uh, Obama, ex-President Obama, okay? And this arrow here, he's also wearing a device here, Fitbit. I don't know, many of you might not be aware, but uh, during his regime, there was this bill passed in the American uh, uh, government that every American should be chipped. Which means what? That when a newborn, uh, when a baby is born, there is a small chip, which is called as the RFID chip. You know, it's inserted into the body of that small inborn, and even an American. Uh, coincidentally, there is some parallel session on RFID, which I was told going on there. So just to give you a gist of that, why to do that? Will you personally be, like, will you be like to, you know, would you like a chip to be inserted in your body? As a citizen, you may feel, no, my privacy is gone. 
But on the other side, imagine in, in a city like Mumbai itself, where you know we are traveling, we are rushing across, and uh, God forbid we met with an accident on the road. You are lying down on the road. People just, you know, unfortunate part today, many a times I've found that, you know, people just, instead of helping that victim, they start to switch on their mobile and start taking videos. Till the police come, nobody will touch them. You're just lying there. Ambulance, you put it in the ambulance, they, they take you away. You go to the hospital. The doctor, instead of starting the treatment, okay, what are your allergies, what are this, uska relative ayane do, baad mein hum chalu karenge, this, that, blah, 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 blah. On the other side, imagine that there is a chip inside your body. This chip is actually having your complete medical history. Your complete medical history is there into that. All your relatives information is there into that. All the, uh, the uh, medicines for which you are allergic is already there in that. What the doctor does is, he simply makes you lie down. He moves a scanner over your body and the complete data comes on his system and immediately they can start the treatment before the near, uh, near and dear one comes, tell them, no, he is allergic to this, she is allergic to that, isko ye problem hai, wo problem, nothing, no problem at all. Right? So every coin has got two sides, that's what digital disruption is. But then thanks to him that he actually opened the eyes of a lot of people like us and uh, we see this is another uh, variable uh, tracking device or uh, uh, health device, I would say, health and fitness device, which is, you know, removable. Or you can actually embed it, either ways, whatever you feel like. Uh, new innovation, of course, I'm not a marketing person for this company, so please don't misunderstand me. But then a very simple device, which goes into your ears, and, you know, it, it monitors your respiration rate, your heart rate monitor, oxygen saturation, blood pressure monitoring, well-being manager, personal trainer, blah, 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 blah. Can, can I uh, please request you to please uh, play this video? It's a small video there. Prepare for workout. Session initiated. Follow the prepared route. Please slow down and increase respiration rate. Do not stop. Route has not yet been completed. All the instructions are in that here, the program. Destination reached. Good work today. Gartner also has predicted that by 2018, almost 45% of the companies will be having more smarter machines than men. Again, uh, another side of the digital disruption. You know, way back, uh, almost like three decades or four decades when the computers came into the uh, country, there was a big agitation, there will be uh, loss of job and people will be jobless and so on. I don't know how many of you remember that. But then uh, we have gone through that phase and in fact jobs have increased. You see, it's, that's the irony of the scenario. Sometimes on one side we talk about paperless office, on the other side we talk about automation, the third side we talk about dig digitization. Even though, you know, these figures are there, they are sometimes horrifying. But then on the other side, if you, the start, if you go through the statistics, definitely we'll find that there's nothing like uh, job recession. It's only the need of the hour, the change of scenario, and the slowness of people to adapt to the change. That's where the job recessions come into the picture. They have further, uh, this is something really very uh, surprising and uh, Unfortunate part that uh, the intellectual property owners are going to lose out almost to a tune of $100 billion per year through the copyright theft because that is another side of digital disruption. 3D printing, you know, you can see that this is the original piece which is being duplicated here, printed through the digital printer. So a lot of intellectual properties are going to, you know, be affected because of this technology. But then, as I told you, every coin has got two sides. McKinsey says that you know these are the top 12 digital uh, disruptive technologies which are very popular nowadays and amongst them you are aware that mobile internet definitely, the automation of knowledge work, internet of things which is something which is almost a talk of the town, the cloud technology, advanced robotics and so many other things. But then 
this is one part, you know, renewable energy, solar energy, this, that, sort of things. So if we just try to conclude, digital disruption is exciting, fun, and even should be embraced. Behind the technology is the goal of making life what? Better and easier. And for businesses, it can lead to a new market and growth opportunities. While trying to keep up with the high-speed technology changes, it is important that how to make the most of them and remember the benefits they, create, they bring in. So it's always better to see the positive side of it rather than the other side of it. So with that, I conclude my talk and I thank you for this. And before this, I just uh, request you to, we'll just go through this slide which will summarize the whole talk in this. Can you please uh, play this movie? Navigating digital disruption can be challenging for established companies. I want to help you understand the life cycle of disruption and the actions you can take at each stage to survive and even thrive in the digital age. Here's a typical company growth curve. As the business matures, the early willingness to experiment gives way to standardization. It focuses on doing more of what works and generating consistent cash flow to support growth. But as we'll see, the strengths that help a company become an incumbent tend to become weaknesses when disruption hits. Disruption introduces a new business model that's at odds with your current one. At this early stage of disruption, you're struggling to figure out what's real and what's hype. There's barely any effect on your core business. You're still making money, so you don't feel the need to act. At this stage, incumbents aren't looking for and sometimes don't want to see the dangers on the horizon. The biggest challenge here is myopia. It takes rare foresight and a lot of courage to make a preemptive move and change your business model at this stage. And that move will often face resistance from your stakeholders. Still, it's vital here to challenge your own story about how your industry makes money. It takes acuity, a particular sharpness of vision to do this. By now, the trend is clear. Successful newcomers have validated the new business model. Action at this point is critical. You need to nurture new ventures in the emerging business model. And these initiatives need autonomy from your core business, even if they cannibalize it. The idea is to act before you have to. The problem though, is that it still doesn't feel like you need to do anything. Your earnings are still growing. The vague threat just doesn't seem as dangerous as immediate hardship. After all, when Netflix disrupted itself in 2011 by shifting from DVDs to streaming, its share price dropped by over 80%. Few boards are willing to endure that kind of pain. But by this stage, the industry is moving rapidly to the new model, which has proven superior to the old. You'll start feeling the squeeze in your results. It's time to hit the gas. You need to accelerate your transformation by aggressively shifting resources to the new ventures. Think of it as treating these new businesses like venture capital investments that only pay off if they scale rapidly, while the old ones are subject to a private equity style workout. Now that is an incredibly tough shift for incumbents to make, especially when the forces of disruption are reducing the overall cash flow available. Performance will suffer, and the natural inclination is to cut back on peripheral activities and focus on your core legacy business. The problem is, you may no longer have a core legacy business. The disruptive model has become the new normal. Whether you like it or not, your industry has fundamentally changed. If you haven't taken action, your cost base is likely out of whack with your industry's new business model. Your earnings are diving, and you're poorly positioned to become a market leader. The only thing to do is adapt or exit the business, with the hard reality being that the glory days of your industry may be behind you. Now, that sounds gloomy, but the overall message here is positive. Companies that show foresight and a willingness to make bold moves before it's too late can emerge as winners. After all, no one ever won a race by standing still. So thank you all of you. I just try to give a gist of that, so thanks a lot. People say that uh, disruption in technology, you know, it is coming like a wave, you cannot stop it. But when you look at it, uh, just as Maggie came with a pricing that uh, nobody could challenge it for years to come. Yes. Now these hand bands that we have, Fitbit and all that, right. 
pricing of 8,000, 10,000 is ridiculous. I mean, it should be, I mean, it's a plastic band with some electronic. What is it that is stopping them from making millions of pieces, rather thousands they are maybe able selling in India? What are, based on the price that I see, I hardly see five people in a day or two people in a day wearing a band. I really appreciate that question because being a technologist myself, the cost of that band might be really peanuts. But then uh, this is what uh, the, uh, you know, the best part of a digital marketing or a marketing manager, I would say, uh, which comes into the picture. So it's like, you know, how much you make a hype of it and uh, it's just a demand and supply. And if you see the statistics of the past also, any new gadget which is introduced into the market comes up with a big price and then slowly as the consumption increases, as the, you know, the, the market demand increases, the price reduces. And uh, I was very happy when you gave the example of Maggie, just for uh, somebody, I mean, who, some, someone who's not aware of it. That, that is what I, I mentioned about, you know, uh, agility and the culture change. You know, trying to adopt digital disruption trying to adopt new innovative ideas. There is uh, one outlet which I came across at Ghatkopar, the Vikran Circle, which is supposed to be a hub of foods. Uh, there, this particular joint is making not less than 35 to 40 items of just Maggi. Starting from Maggi pakodas and uh, Maggi pizzas, and I don't know what not. I mean, sorry, but I cannot, I don't know much of the details of it. I was really shocked when my elder son just mentioned that I just went in and had a Maggi pakoda. Now, you know, for me, that was not uh, very interesting. For me, what was interesting was that why did this fellow start all these things? So I actually went physically there in that uh, Vikran circle, and you will be surprised there are not less than 35 joints. All of food. It's like, you know, what we, uh, in Indian, we call it uh, typically in Mumbai, Abhasha, that khaugali. It's, it's typically a khaugali. So to survive in that uh, place, you need to really have come out with some innovative ideas. Of course, most of us are aware that today the menus are being ordered on the tab. You are given a tab and you can actually place the order on the tab or on the go before you reach that particular place. You, can, you have an app to book a table. So all those digital disruption is actually coming in. But then to what extent uh, people will survive is something which is really a big question mark. And I really have my sympathies to the so-called venture capitalists who are just blindly putting in a lot of money or pumping in this money into this uh, boom of startups. So let's hope for the best. Uh, hello, uh, my yes. question is if you see the behind the, the diagram itself, you can see the red ocean where all the red fishes are against so yes. blue, blue ocean. That is the concept yes. of red ocean and blue ocean. So down the line, if you, this particular blue uh, fish will be becoming the red fish because some new blue fish will be coming up. So take example, during my MTech research, I had done the multimedia security as a subject, yes. subject. So I found, as I told about the chips. So then they have been, like, I'm talking 10 years back, they have been doing the bio digitization. Actually, like, yes. did, uh, like what do you have, the retina, thumbs, so they are doing the DNA signatures. Actually, so yes. if you enter a toll plaza or any mall, right. during do, do a shredded dead screen, they will be able to identify it. So you can see the disruption, uh, disruption cycle is so fast now. If the industry cycle has been, uh, way, uh, like, has some phases, but now it's so fast. So it has to be very, uh, like, as you said, uh, normally in the world business, time to market. But yes. for the, as a, a, a technological, uh, can say, uh, a, a firm, we have to be ahead of the, uh, like, ag against all yes, that. Yes, so identify yes. how it will be challenging and what are the prospects in terms of transformation. No, the prospects are very high. And as you rightly mentioned that, you know, you need to be ahead of times. And the best part, let me tell you, the, the major consolation which we Indians have is Indians are supposed to be the best researchers across the world. You'll be surprised. Only the unfortunate part is that they are, they are not able to project themselves. They're not able to, you know, market their own uh, documentation. They're not good at documentation. That's where they lack, lack. A simple classical example, which he mentioned, I really appreciate that. Another example of a chip being embedded into the uh, small infant. Now there is one device which is called as an implant, which you know we have uh, where research is going on on a newborn baby, which we uh, try to uh, interface it with one or two cells, the nerve cells of the baby. Why? Because when that baby is you know feeling uh, cold or the, the baby is you know feeling uneasy, that baby is not able to express that the, the mother is many a times not able to understand what the, what is happening we just try to pat, pat the baby or we just try to you know move around 
but then actually what is the problem that baby is facing is we are not understanding that's where this research is going and that's what this digital disruption is actually taking ahead the medical field also so that's wonderful you know it's actually wonderful but then uh, yes it's, it's very simple sir it's very simple the thing is the resources the adaptation mainly what we are lacking is to adapt a new technology because of the fear that whether we will be able to cope up or whether we will be able to be cheated ask for your own self how many of us have actually comfortable in doing that online payment a very classical example i'm giving you we took a long time to adapt to online payment rather than the western countries where it was just a baby swiping that card yes exactly and again, I'll emphasize on this part that if you see, if you do the research, if you go there, even in those countries who are in the back end, the Asian Indians who are actually doing the literally the coding part, they're hard coders, they are doing a lot of research, but they are always in the back end. And these people take it in the front end, the technology, they give it a very nice picture and a flowery, uh, what I can say, dress up the mannequin, and then they put it in front of the country. So, but then yes, the time will come. Maybe five years down the line, I'm really seeing that disruption taking us much, at least if not ahead, in parallel to that. Yeah. I think time will tell whether uh, digital, it would be a disruption in the long run. Probably it is in our hands. We yes. are the human beings. We are going to digitize it. So how and to what extent to we what do extent, it is yes. it is in our hands. So thank you very much, sir, for the Welcome. wonderful presentation. Thank you. Thank you. A small disruption here too. Um, we have uh, uh, Sali Pradhan. She is a very, very active volunteer uh, of the PMI Mumbai chapter, and uh, I request her to felicitate you, sir. That's an honor because I am a volunteer of IEEE, and we always respect volunteers who are ba always in the back end of the team. So thank you, ma'am. Thanks a lot. It's a big honor for me to receive that. Thank you, God sir. You. Okay, thank you. We'll now have a tea break and followed by common keynote speakers. Next two sessions will be common keynote speakers. Thank you.